Welcome back to STL Live. I'm Sarah Bernard. I'm here with life coach and author Greg Sansone. We've been talking about your personal struggles with OCD and anxiety for many, many years until yes. your early 40s when yes. you started figuring it out mm -hmm. and getting help. And you wrote a book, did. Commit Emotional Suicide. Yes. So tell me about the book. Yes. The book I just released several months ago. It's on Amazon, I mean, but it's brand new. And basically, the book is about sharing my story, what I went through, just briefly. But then I get into what took me out of it um, and the critical insights and distinctions that really took me out of this pain. So I had, when I had to come up with the title, um, I thought, what is the main thing that really pulled me forward out of this? And it was, you know what? Doing the worst thing that I want to do. To do and go to the most fearful place and hang there as long as possible. And it is amazing, OCD, anxiety or not, if as people we do that, the freedom that comes after that is remarkable. Mm. So okay. it felt like committing emotional suicide, the title of the book. And putting yourself out there. So talk about your life when it was at its worst in yeah. your 20s and 30s. Mm. Most people I talk to, many of my friends say that they feel like they have a bit of OCD. And, and so I think maybe it's sort of relevant to everyone to a certain extent, but you had it at its very worst. Yes. So give me an example of what it was like to get through a day for you. Yes, wonderful. What it was like to get through a day was to wake up and to immediately have a worried mind. Immediately have a worried mind. Um, what if, as I stated, what if something falls out of the sky and hits me? What if God is not a good guy? What if I'm in, with a group today and I get anxious and they notice I'm anxious and my palms sweat and I become humiliated? You know, Were these kind of worries such that they're so strong that they would keep you from engaging in activities, keep you at home? They, I, I thought it. I would, but it definitely limited my life mm -hmm. and my quality of life because so I was always trying to figure it out, yeah. which is the wrong thing. Okay, you were always trying to figure it out, figure out what what was going on in your head or how to get over it. How to get over it. Okay. And that's called the compulsion, the mm -hmm. figuring out compulsion. So the obsession brings the anxiety, the thought, the fear, the worry, and then the compulsion to get rid of it is figuring out, and that just makes it deeper and deeper. Yeah. So that was going on. You don't want to do the compulsion to make it go away. Instead, you want to feel the anxiety that it brings until it leaves. Then you're free. So in today, you, you're an author on this subject. You, yes. you do public speaking in yes. front of groups about the subject. You lead small groups, therapy yes. groups, yes. and you do private um, coaching and and therapy, am yes. I right, on everything? Not therapy, I'm a life coach, but yes, yes. private okay. coaching. Okay, so pretty much got it right. So, yeah. so yeah. You've, you've devoted your life to helping people with similar types of anxiety. You got it. So what, do you, what are the, some steps, what are the first three or four steps that you tell people specifically who have anxiety yeah. just to start making progress against it? First step I say is change your mindset. So I teach bold mindset change. When we're hurting, when we're in anxiety, we want relief. As long as you pursue relief when you're anxious, you won't get it. You have to pursue resilience of how long you can tolerate the anxiety purpose, purposely and intentionally. And when you do that, your tolerance for the discomfort goes up. When that happens, relief shows up on its own. So give me an example. If the worry in your head is something's going to fall out of the sky, yes. what do you tell yourself? So what you would do is you would speak into a recorder that worry, or you'd write it down, and then you'd present yourself to it. Sit in a chair and read it or listen to it. And then after you listen to it, let the anxious feeling be there okay. and experience it. And do that over and over and over until the anxiety starts to drop. And pretty soon, you get to the point of boredom. And when you get to the point of boredom, you're no longer afraid, hmm. and you're free. And you do that for everything, all of your Everything. Words. And the thing is, when you work on one, it works on all of them, because you're working mm -hmm. on the same part of the brain and mm -hmm. the emotion. So it's a wonderful thing to watch happen. And people who come to group are like, oh, man, this is fantastic. There needs to be more of it here in, in the Midwest. And you lead groups every week? Every week, twice a week. Okay. And through, all, of, go ahead. Through Center Point Hospital. Okay. They sponsor it. Yeah. Going on about six years now. Okay. And to get more information, people can contact you via your website. Contact me at the website or Gregory Sandstone at hotmail.com. Phone number, 
anything they want. Okay. Yes. Very good. You're easy to reach. Easy to and reach. And ready to help. In a minute. In a minute. I love that. All right. We don't have time for all the rest of the tips. I want to go into more detail, but I'm getting the wrap-up signs. So we're going to take a break right now, Greg. But thank you so, so much for coming, sharing your book, sharing your personal experiences. Best of luck to you and to all of our viewers who share similar issues. We don't want people to wait 20 years for right. help, right? <laughs> for more information about Powerful Living and Gregory Sansone's work, visit GregorySansone.com. There's more STL Live after this. Stay with us.